Sorry everybody, it's Oaks here, and welcome to week two of the MLBA. We are facing off against Matt Metagross, and he has a very threatening team. Now, uh, again, I did not have enough time to do a team builder uh, due to the fact that it's been the holidays and, you know, I've had uh, company over, so I haven't been able to uh, get much recording done. This battle did get delayed a little bit, but uh, luckily the league has allowed most of us to take a little bit of extra time for our battles since it is around the holiday, uh, so that was... Great. Uh, so we did have the battle a little bit ago, so I am going to go over what I brought and uh, my thoughts before the battle. Uh, but yeah, so first up I have Choice Scarf Embor. Uh, I wanted to bring Choice Scarf Embor this week because a lot of his mons are very slow. His fastest mon is Mega Charizard X. So Choice Scarf Embor outspeeds that, so as long as he doesn't have rival Choice Scarfers, uh, I'll be able to outspeed and do quite a lot of damage. Next up, I have Assault Vest, Fully Special Defense, Invested, Empoleon. Uh, now this, I, I debated on this set a lot. So originally I was running Max Defense uh, with Leftovers, and I was bringing Stealth Rock and Roar to deal with the Charizard. But after later review, if Charizard is able to get up a Dragon Dance, there's not really much I can do uh, defensively with my Empoleon, so instead I decided to run my Gastrodon defensively, which was originally run with Special Defense Investment and the Assault Vest. So I switched the two sets up, and now uh, my Empoleon I'm running, I believe Scald, Earthquake, Aqu Aqua Jet, and what was my last move? I believe it was, I can't think of it. Was it HP Bug? Signal Beam. No. Knockoff. It was Knockoff. That's what it was. I was debating on a lot of moves, so I I, uh, I put Knockoff on there. Then for my Gastrodon, I'm running uh, Scald, Earthquake, Recover, and Clear Smog in case the top of Finny sets up Calm Mines or if the Charizard uh, sets up at all. Next up, I have my Gardevoir. I am running Wish on my Gardevoir and then three attacks, Moonblast, Psychic, and Shadow Ball. Uh, I do have the leftover item just for general recovery, so maybe I can get some wishes off on my Empoleon since it does not have any way of recovering. Uh, then I have a second Choice Scarf Mon this week, Choice Scarf Crocodile. I'm running uh, Earthquake, Knockoff, Pursuit, and one of those moves. I think I have Superpower for if Porygon 2 was brought. Porygon 2 did not get brought, and I didn't think it was going to be brought because I have the Megalopony and the Embor, which really threatened the P2, so I didn't expect to see P2. The other ones he had was Hariyama and Archon, both of which didn't get brought, and both of which I did not expect to uh, be brought in the first place. And then for my final Mon, I have Zygar 10% with a uh, Darkinium Z item specifically for Kofagrigus, so I'm glad that Kofagrigus did get brought because it would be quite the uh, wasted item slot if the Kofagrigus was not there. And I am running uh, Dragon Dance with no Dragon move, but I do have Thousand Arrows and Extreme Speed alongside Crunch, obviously, to use that Dark EMZ. So that's my team. Uh, I was really nervous this week because I don't have many switch-ins to Charizard. Uh, I did kind of sort that out with Gastrodon, and I don't really have many switch-ins to the combination of Hoopa and Magirna, so if they are run, you know, this could be a potential Trick Room team. And then obviously Nidoking to break the walls. So yeah, I'll quit rambling and I will uh, play the battle. So I decided to lead with my Crocodile just because, you know, I, I just thought... I think it's going to be my best lead. If I see a lead Nidoking, I can, you know, deal with that right away. And... One thing I forgot to mention before the battle, he has zero ground resist. Zero. His only immunities are Charizard and Archon. Charizard, because it's Mega X, it has to Mega Evolve right away, and I can hit it with an Earthquake. So, I, I'm free to click Earthquake always, which is why I believe I have a ground move on every single Mon, except for Gardevoir. Gardevoir is the only thing that doesn't have a ground move, and it has coverage for everything else anyways, except for the Magirna. So, leading off with Crocodile, in my opinion, was my best bet, because he has zero ground resist. So he did lead Magirna, and I didn't want to risk like a Shooka Berry or anything weird, so I switched into my Empoleon, and he switches into his Tapu Fini. Now this gives me very valuable information saying that he does not want to keep in his Magirna against Crocodile. So I now know that Crocodile is going to be huge this game. And I believe here I just uh, go for a knockoff. I knew the major Nature's Madness was coming, there wasn't much I could do about it, but I do get rid of this thing's leftovers, which means it's not going to be able to recover health, which is going to be fantastic. I'm going to be able to wear that finny down, which will allow for my Crocodile to start sweeping. 
Uh, I do go into my Gastrodon and try to Earthquake the Magirna, but he does go back into the Finny. And again, I'm just getting this chip damage off on the Finny, which is fantastic. He can Nature's Madness my Gastrodon all he wants. As I show here, I have the Recover. And now I go into my Embor on the Cofagrigus, and because I saw that the Finny was... A, a very heavily defensive set. I thought maybe he would go Finny here, predicting the Flare Blitz not wanting to take damage on the Cofagrigus. And the reason why I made that play was because I was thinking, okay, maybe this Cofagrigus is specially defensive to, you know, potentially handle something like a Gardevoir or an offensive Zapdos. So I thought, okay, maybe he doesn't want to keep this thing on the Embor. And at the same time, I was thinking, well, he most likely is the mummy because of the megalopony. If I hit it once, it would get rid of the uh, the ability to hit ghost types. But I thought, okay, well, maybe he could be like something weird. So I did predict the Finny. I was wrong in my prediction, and I do lose the reckless ability, and I get hit with a Shadow Ball, meaning that I am definitely going to have to switch out here because I am choice locked in. I go into my Empoleon and take basically zero damage from that Shadow Ball. Uh, this Empoleon is going to tank so many hits. And originally, uh, I do knock off the Magirna and it reveals that it's an Assault Vest, so I don't have to worry about Chocoberry. I even take 23% from a Volt Switch, so that that was pretty cool. But originally, I did run this Empoleon with Defiant, but I decided later on, maybe I want to run Torrent because I have the Aqua Jet. And that will come into play in a bit here. So I do get off the Earthquake damage on this top of Penny, doing barely anything, uh, and then I decide to go for Scald because it would do more. Uh, I am barely able to survive on 2% HP and really wearing down this Finny, which is just fantastic. I go into my Gardevoir while the Misty Terrain is still up, so that way I don't get poisoned. I take the Surf relatively nicely, and I do believe I go for a Wish here, just to see if he's going to switch out. Uh, he Nature's Madness, my health down, maybe he was assuming I would like double again. But I am able to knock out the Finny and get the Wish Recovery, and then the Leftovers Recovery on top of that, bringing me back to full. And here comes in the Nitto King. Now, I'm assuming... One of two things is going to happen here. He's either going to go for a poison attack to knock out my Gardevoir right away, which in my mind, I thought he was going to do because I watched his battle from the previous week, and he typically, with this Nidoking, attacked what was in front of him almost always. So I thought, okay, you know, this is the first time the Nidoking is being brought in. I don't know if it's Specs. I don't know if it's Band. I don't know if it's a Life Orb. Maybe it could be something crazy like... Uh, choice scarf or something so i i don't know what the node king is gonna be and i decide okay i'm just gonna go and pull yon if he knocks me out whatever you know i can go into crocodile and deal with that uh later or if maybe you know he goes for the poison attack i'll be able to get off a torrent boosted aqua jet and that's what happens i get off huge damage against this nitro king which really the damage on this nitro king wasn't incredibly important but what was important here is he goes for the hidden power and reveals that he's a life orb which is this is great because now i know my zygarde can come in i don't have to fear an ice beam and here i really wanted to dragon dance because i was almost positive he was going to switch but i could not take the risk of him just sitting there clicking ice beam so right here i do go for the thousand arrows which is going to give me enough damage to then even after the leftovers go for the dark indium z and knock out the copa Grigas. and this is just like or sorry, I, I do knock him out on the next turn as he sets up another layer of Toxic Spikes. So this is just best case scenario for me. I don't really care about the Toxic Spikes. I knock out the Copa Grigas and now there's nothing stopping my Crocodile. I just decide I'm going to get chip damage on this Hoopa. I don't know if it's Choice Scarfed. It probably is if you brought it in like that. So I'm just going to get the Extreme Speed off on the Hoopa, do the damage. I'm not going to risk Dragon Dancing and trying to sweep with Zygarde, which honestly Zygarde could have swept there if I did get up one Dragon Dance. But instead, my Crocodile is going to come in. I do have speed. I do get a critical hit here. Now, he said this mattered, but his Hoopa only had 40 HP. And according to my calc, uh, the lowest damage I did was like 60 or 70. So I don't think that this crit mattered. Maybe it did. But like the only way I wasn't knocking out this Hoopa here is if he did have more defensive investment and just didn't say. Or if like I got a really absolute min roll and he had defensive investment, which I don't think was the case. So I do get a critical hit. I knock him out. And with the Moxie boost, the game is sealed. The Magirna does not have a Shulker Berry. I'm going to knock it out of plus one. The Charizard is forced to Mega Evolve, and that will knock him out. Uh, once, you know, obviously he's no longer flying, I knock him out with a plus two Earthquake. And we already know that the Nidoking King is slower than me, and he's weak to ground. And at plus three, I'm going to knock him out with the Crocodile. So a game that I honestly was expecting to lose, 
I ended up winning 4-0 and I got a really good sweep with the crocodile. So this is going to balance out my differential. It's obviously I took a pretty big loss last week and honestly like last week I felt like I played a good game but obviously uh, the differential didn't show very well. So I did have a much better differential. I, I feel like I played this game really well. Like. I was worried early on whenever Empoleon was getting worn down because I was afraid of the Magirna, but I knew that I just needed to get one of my sweepers in there. I needed to break walls with Zygarde, and honestly, I ended up breaking walls with my defensive mons, uh, and it was basically just to allow for either Embor, Crocodile, or Zygarde to, you know, get in there and start taking names, and that's pretty much uh, what, what we saw here with the combination of Zygarde and Crocodile. So obviously, you know, I'm upset that I didn't get to Dragon Dance Sweep with Zygarde, that could have been pretty cool, but I'm glad that the Moxie Crook worked out. And uh, that's going to be all for me this week, kind of a short one, but uh, yeah, the battle was pretty fast paced, and uh, that's going to be it for me, so I'll see you guys next time. Okay, thanks, bye.